This week I tried to wake up at 4 a.m. every day. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It is 4.28 now. 4.22. Now 8 p.m. 4 a.m. 5.11. It's 5.30. 9.30. 6.20. It is now 10 past 5. And I'm buzzing. So tired. I got out of bed really easily, but I feel good. I am wrecked. I just feel so good. Huge wave of tiredness. I've had three coffees, which is probably not a good thing. I have always been someone who loves mornings, but not to the extent where I would wake up at 4 a.m. I feel like the only times I've ever really done that is like a once-off here and there to get to the airport or to watch the sunrise very, very rarely. So I just wanted to try this as a bit of a personal experiment, I guess. I just wanted to see if it was a realistic option for me, if it was a sustainable routine slash habit to implement in my life and just how much it impacted the other parts of my life. So in this video, I kept you guys updated on my tiredness levels what I think may have impacted those tiredness levels and of course just what I get up to during the day so that you guys might be able to gauge if you want to try this or see if it might work for your lifestyle. So let's just jump straight into Monday morning. Yeah. Here's to the good days. I know I look a little bit like a floating head right now, but this is just kind of like the lighting situation we're dealing with. <laughs> but good morning. It is 4.28 now. You can barely see that, but 4.28. I just got to the gym. I thought it would be like dead. Tell me why the car park is already like partly full. Someone's walking past. I definitely thought the gym would be completely empty, not gonna lie. I really did think that. Um, it's not. There's already so many people here and it looks like they're all men. Awesome. But apart from that, I won't talk too long because again, floating head situation. But I feel good. I feel fine. Like I got out of bed so easily this morning. So I'm gonna head in now, but feeling good. Then we cry. Cause we both know it's gonna hurt. But not as much as this does. We had a good run. Don't say we didn't. I was your first love. The sun is starting to rise. I just finished my workout. It is now 10 past five. I would have normally just woken up. It is now 11 a.m. and I wanted to give you a bit of an update on my thoughts so far. First of all, pros. I love having a slow morning and I love not feeling like I have to rush to do things. And waking up at 4 a.m., there just feels like no rush to do anything, to be anywhere, because it just feels like you have so much time. At least that's how I felt. And I just love that feeling. Even the fact that I woke up, obviously went to the gym and got home by like 5.30, a little bit before 5.30. I normally wake up at five and kind of just like take my time getting ready, have a coffee, start my day, read a book for a while. The fact that I could still do my normal morning routine, even though I've already worked out, it's just amazing because usually I go to the gym somewhere around midday. It's just kind of how I prefer to train because the gym is a bit quieter and it kind of breaks up my day quite nicely. But the fact that now I could either have an extended lunch break in the middle of the day or maybe get some extra work done or just kind of do a fun activity or something for an hour in the middle of the day because I've just like gained an extra hour. It just feels really nice. The cons so far is obviously I just feel so tired. This is kind of difficult because last night I had about seven hours sleep, which is great. I feel like I can survive on seven hours sleep. That seems very doable and sustainable to me. But the night before I slept for like three-ish hours. So I think I'm still feeling the residual tiredness from that night, if that makes sense, which is really skewing my tiredness for today because I don't know if I can attribute my current tiredness to the 4 a.m. wake up today or the three hour sleep that I had the other night or a combination of both. So that is quite unhelpful, but is that the only con? I do feel like my work is not as efficient as it normally is because I am more tired. And the fact that it's only 11 and I'm already feeling this huge wave of tiredness is just kind of sucky. I actually did attempt to take a nap I put on a 30 minute timer and I was like, I just want to see if I can fall asleep for 30 minutes just to kind of revive myself, I guess, because I am struggling. Put on my timer, lay down for literally seven minutes and then got back up again because I just, I can't nap. I've tried, but I just can't seem to do it. So I don't think napping is really an option for me personally. If it is for you, this could be such a game changer. And actually, I just thought of another con. The fact that the gym wasn't that quiet this morning was kind of disappointing. Like I thought I was gonna turn up and it was gonna be fairly 
dead. Like I thought it was going to be so quiet, obviously a few people there, but it was, I don't want to say just as busy, but like I can go at midday and it's quieter. So I feel like the motivation to get the gym done in the morning is not like super prevalent because I can obviously go later and the gym is not as busy and I can still get an extra hour of sleep. I feel like if I went to the gym and it was dead and I would have had like all the machines and all the squat racks and all that sort of stuff to myself, I'd be so much more motivated to wake up early and go to the gym straight away, but it just wasn't the case. Anyway, I've stopped work for now. I'm going to go grocery shopping and then come back and have lunch. I'm really intrigued to see how I feel after like a nutritious, good lunch. Cause I feel like sometimes when I'm tired, if I have a good meal, it really just boosts my energy. And then I'll probably also have a coffee after lunch, which will also help with that. But I'm intrigued to see how awful my mid afternoon slump is because I already get a mid afternoon slump without waking up at 4am. So I feel like it could potentially hit me hard today, but we'll see. We'll see. I thought I would update you guys because it's now almost 5 p.m. And I feel like I'm only just now getting a bit of a wave of tiredness, but I've also just been sitting on the couch for the past like 20 minutes after finishing work and just like chilling. But I didn't hit a mid-afternoon slump at all. Like I mentioned to you guys, I had lunch and I had a coffee. So obviously those would have been so helpful, but yeah. I didn't feel tired at all this afternoon. Got heaps of work done, just felt fine. I'm just kind of shocked because I really thought this afternoon would be worse than this morning, but honestly, probably 9.30 to like 11.30 was probably the worst tiredness. I do think I'm gonna try and have an early night, but yeah, I feel fine. So interesting. so sorry about this lighting but turns out filming at 4 a.m it's not good lighting anyway because it's literally pitch black it is 4 22 i just made it to the gym i'm actually at a different gym than i was yesterday and you guys know yesterday it was like quite busy and i was so shocked so i was like let me try out a different like location different gym i've just arrived and there is one car in the car park which is perfect that's exactly what i wanted so i'm assuming that means i'll have pretty much the whole gym to myself anyway i feel good i got out of bed really easily i did go to bed quite early last night I went to bed at like, oh, I was like in bed by like 8.30 and then I probably turned out my light at like 8.45 because I was tired enough to go to sleep at 8.45 and I was probably asleep by nine. That was amazing. Let's go train. finish my workout it is 5 11 and you guys know when i arrived two cars in the car park now it is it's not full but it is close to full so it's just crazy how many people are obviously waking up so early i probably shouldn't sound too shocked though because i feel like australians in general like it's really normal for us to wake up early obviously not everyone does because you don't need to but i don't think it's like super weird to hear that people wake up at 5 a.m every day anyway I'm gonna head home. The sun is rising, so it's gonna be such a beautiful drive home. And then I'll start my day, obviously. It is now 9.30. I've been working since probably seven. And I've just gotta say, I feel so much better today than I did yesterday. As you guys know, I felt very like slumpy pretty much all morning until I ate lunch and had my second coffee and then I felt fine. But this morning, I just feel so good. I haven't felt tired really at all. Like when I first got home from the gym, I was like, ooh, like it'd be nice to hop back into bed. But I just kind of kept going. Going and I felt that for like maybe five minutes and then I felt fine. I'm about to hop onto a meeting. I have done some filming this morning, done some editing this morning. I feel like I'm just smashing through the day so far. Maybe because I'm feeling more awake this morning, I might end up having an afternoon slump, but we'll wait and see. Obviously, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming the main reason why I feel so good today compared to yesterday is because last night I had an amazing sleep. Like I said, I was in bed and asleep by 9 p.m. and awake by 4 a.m., which is seven hours sleep, which is much better than I've had for like the two nights previous to that. Honestly, I'm assuming that's the main difference but we'll see, I'll keep you guys updated again because things could change, but I'm gonna hop on this meeting. How are you? I'm good, how are you? And I'm not sure what it is for Instagram. We're going okay, well we have an event coming up. Just hit 1 p.m., I've just been working. I actually did stop for a bit, do a little bit of meal prep kinda, made some lunch for the next few days and also ate some lunch. And I feel like this week doing this, I don't know if I wanna call it a challenge, but waking up at 4 a.m. has made me realize how much food is fuel because every time I eat a meal I just feel so much more energized and yeah that makes perfect sense but I just feel like I've never noticed the effects 
as much as I have these last couple days. I think what I'm going to do now is actually spend some time working from my walking pad because I haven't used it in a couple days and I have just been very sedentary. And I've also found that when I do feel tired, it's usually after I've just been sitting down for a long time, just kind of like doing very monotonous repetitive work which is editing you just kind of sit and type and so i'm thinking if i am doing that work while on the walking pad that i might not feel as tired i also haven't had my second coffee yet so the fact that i'm feeling this good at 1 p.m without a second coffee is pretty good for me personally Today is Wednesday and Wednesday is my rest day. I'm trying to get to the gym Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So obviously I don't have to go today. I actually was considering going because I was scared that if I woke up at four and didn't have like somewhere to be, I would just go back to bed. But I got up and went to the bathroom, washed my face, like did all of the things that I would normally do. And I felt like fine and like I feel pretty awake. So I think I'm just gonna stay at home and get an extra hour of reading because that's my personal favorite thing to do. But you could obviously use this hour for whatever you want obviously the only issue is that i need to be fairly quiet so that i don't wake up liam because he doesn't usually get up to like six i'm about to head off for the day well for a few hours at least i honestly cannot tell if i like my outfit or not i feel like it's kind of different for me but i think i like it i'm wearing this little tank and these like knitted shorts i don't know if you can tell the texture but the shorts and this over shirt came in a set from princess polly and it kind of makes me feel like i look like i'm wearing like a onesie because i'm showing the little tank and tucked it in to the shorts and then I'm thinking a little shoulder bag. This one is from Peter and Jane. Gold accessories. And then a pair of sunglasses, but I don't know which one. We have this one, which are kind of like oversized, don't talk to me vibes. Or we have these ones, which are kind of more, I don't even know, like almost 70s vibe. Kind of like orange tinted, slicked back hair. I think I'm kind of leaning towards the oversized ones actually. I feel like it's more the vibe. What do we think? And how much sure we can fit in this little bag? I'm meeting Soph at 12 in West End. We're going to this little beginning boutique pop-up shop. Let's see if my Kindle fits in here. <laughs> Perfect. I've never done something like this. I don't really know what it is, but beginning boutique invited us and we're like, why not? It's in West End. So I think I'm gonna try and get there a little bit early. And I wanna check out Bent Books and then I can't remember the name, but there's another bookshop along the like main strip of West End. And it's just like a little independently run bookshop. However, I've just realized that this camera will not fit in that little bag. So we might pull out the G7X. Does she have battery? I haven't used her in a while. Looking good. Okay, I'll switch you guys over. This always feels so close to my face after getting used to my wide angle. So I'm sorry if it feels like I'm all up in your grill, but you gotta do what you gotta do. To give you guys a bit of an update on the 4 a.m. wake up situation. So today was day three. It is now 8 p.m. and I am wrecked. Like I feel so tired. I feel like I could fall asleep straight away, which isn't a bad thing. It's 8 p.m. I can go to bed if I want to, but this is just like the most tired I've felt throughout this week so far. I always feel so dumb saying it because it's like it's been three days. Like it's it's been three days. Don't be dramatic. But I'm just trying to keep my thoughts, feelings, tiredness levels documented because that's kind of like the whole point. I have a few reasons reasons why I think I'm feeling more tired today. First one is I didn't have two coffees today and honestly that could be a game changer. I don't know. I think it's very interesting to see what a difference coffee makes in energy levels but I had one in the morning and then I didn't have a second one around lunchtime which is when I normally have it because I was out and I definitely am feeling the effects of that potentially. I think that's what I'm feeling right now. Secondly, another option could be because I socialized today. And that might sound a little bit random, but I am definitely an introvert, which basically just means, although I love spending time with people and I love hanging out with my friends and the people that I love, it definitely does feel like it deflates me a little bit. Like after hanging out with friends for a few hours, I'll go home and just feel more tired than I would if I were to stay at home by myself. Or well, the third option is that maybe as this challenge continues, maybe I'm just like seeing the effects of having less sleep 
now that it's been a few days. Maybe at the start I wasn't really realizing the difference. It was having just losing one extra hour of sleep per night. But maybe now that it's been a few nights, it's compounded. I'm like actually seeing the long lasting effects of this challenge. But I don't know. I'm very intrigued to see how I go tomorrow and just to see if I'm back to my normal self, back to my normal energy levels. But of course I will keep you guys updated. <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet because I'm still asleep, but I think I need a bit of an energy boost this morning before I go train. We have orange and mango, rainbow sherbet, or of course our OG blue raspberry. These pre-workouts are all from my protein. They're sponsoring this little part of the vlog, so thank you so much, my protein. As always, they'll be linked down below, and you can use my code Rachel C to save a really great percentage off your own order. So all the info is in the description box, but I think I'm gonna. Also, I'm planning on working out outside today, hence the hat. In saying that, the sun doesn't rise till like five, does it? Oh well. Yeah, it literally tastes like a sherbet lolly, so if you like that, you'll love this. Otherwise, of course, we love blue raspberry. Super strong flavor, but like so tasty. And if you're after something not as lolly-like, I think the orange mango is a great option, but I love anything that tastes like a lolly. Like I said, I'll link it down below, but the pre-workouts are probably either my favorite or second favorite product from my protein. Maybe it's my favorite tied with the protein powders, like the whey protein powders, or the flavor drops. Pre-workout, protein powder, and flavor drops are probably the three that I use almost every single day. I don't have pre every single day, but they're probably my three most used and most loved products. So try them out if you haven't already. You guys are literally like in my shower right now. <laughs> like you're in the shower stall, but this was the only way we were gonna get lighting and angle because the window is like right behind you. I'm just doing my makeup. I'm doing very simple makeup. Also, I'm so sorry for echoes in here. I'm just doing a very simple makeup look because I'm gonna go get my hair done in about, like I have to leave in about half an hour. So excited to get my hair done. And I'm pretty sure Georgia and I both booked appointments for the same time. We go to this little like home salon. And so it will probably just be us two hanging out with our hairdresser, who we love. We've got to her for probably close to five years now and she's just the best. I'm kind of considering doing something a little bit different. Like part of me really wants to go a little bit darker and a bit shorter. I think I've definitely decided that I want to go a bit shorter because I was looking back at photos and I feel like my shoulder length hair was kind of the best look for me. Like when I look back at photos and like all the different lengths I've had my hair because I've had my hair like this short all the way down to like this long. And so now that I've had all the different options, I feel like I can really decide which one was my favorite. You know, like when you've done them all, you can just like reference back to old photos. And since I film my life, I have like photos and video footage of like everything, which is very helpful when trying to remember what you look like with a certain hairstyle or color or something. Maybe I'll tell you the makeup that I use while I do this. I'm using the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I've used this again for like years and I feel like it's just very, like I would say it's more on the sheer side in terms of coverage but really buildable and I love having like really lightweight makeup. I have a really red face so all I really want to do is just like even out my skin tone a little bit. I also just don't feel like I wear a crazy amount of makeup so I don't know if I'm really trustworthy to give this advice but I'm gonna do it anyway. I feel like most days I try and do the least amount of makeup possible and I feel like now I use mostly cream products so I have the Clinique Chubby Stick for bronzer. The Mecca Max Off Duty Blush Stick in Tutu. Oh, my camera's gonna die. And then the Emco Highlight and Glow Stick in the color Champagne. And those are like the three cheek products that I use. My battery died. Right. We're back, but I did my base. And then I'm just gonna use a L'Oreal Skinny Definer Brow Artist Pencil. It just has a pencil and then a spoolie. Again, this is one of those products where I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's just not like, oh my gosh, you guys need this. And I kind of feel the same about my mascara. I like it and I've repurchased this a bunch of times, but I still feel like I'm on the lookout for my perfect mascara. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic. And again, I like it. It's just not like, wow, you guys need this. Also, I always have the most, like this is my stance right now because that just gives me the balance I need and I'm like close enough that I can see what I'm doing. 
Also, this lip balm is my absolute ride or die. I'm sure many of you know about it. I don't know about you guys, but there are some things that it's just like, I am not spending a lot of money on that. And lip balm for me is one of those things, like I'm so sorry, but I'm not gonna be spending like 20, 30, $40 on a lip balm. It's just some sort of mental block I have. And that's literally it. I will say if I'm going to an event or like trying to look a bit nicer, I will definitely do a few extra steps. But for the most part, like this is what I do on a daily basis and I can definitely do it in under 10 minutes. And all of my products fit on this little spinny thing as well as all of my skincare. So it's just, just my favorite thing. Okay, so it's been a few hours and I can't even show you my hair because I've put it up. And we have to leave the house in like 15 minutes, so I don't want to redo it. But if you can tell, it's definitely darker and shorter. But I'm obsessed with it. I love it. It's literally exactly what I wanted. I'm just making myself some quick dinner right now because we are heading off to like our little small group slash Bible study, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just eating some leftovers from last night's dinner, which is just spag bowl. Awesome. I love spilling things on my outfit 15 minutes before I have to leave somewhere. To be fair, I've already stained this outfit a couple times and I was just hoping I could wear it and like no one would notice tonight. Okay, so anyway, we're hanging out with friends tonight. We've got our like small group church thing, which we do every Thursday. I absolutely love it. It's like one of my favorite parts of the week. However, it is like a late night. We'll probably get home around 10, probably between nine and 10. It starts at seven and then we all just like love hanging out. So we kind of hang out for a few hours. And so this is actually gonna be the first test of me having a bit of a later night because as you guys know, I've been going to sleep at like 8.30, 8.45, falling asleep by nine every night and obviously I can't do that tonight. So I'm very intrigued to see how hard it is for me to get up tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. after not having a proper sleep because obviously life just gets in the way sometimes. You can't always have your perfect night routine. It's just like literally not possible. So I think this will be a good test to see just how realistic, oops, how realistic it is for me to get up at 4 a.m. on a daily basis because honestly, at this point, I'm loving it so much that I kind of want to continue it as my normal daily routine, at least for the most part. Like even if I just do it Monday to Friday and then sleep in over the weekend. But like this 4 a.m. thing is really working well for me. Like it is 6.20 right now and I'm buzzing. Like I feel fine. In saying that, today is also the first day this week that I've had three coffees, which is probably not a good thing. I'm sure many other introverts do this as well, but my personal like life hack to me being able to socialize in the evenings when I'm already tired and also being an introvert, like the mix of the two is not ideal. My life hack for that is having a coffee before hanging out with people. And it just gives me that extra boost of energy that I probably wouldn't have had otherwise. Is that toxic? I don't know. Am I addicted to coffee? Probably. But now it's like 6.20 and I feel like I am buzzing, which is great for obviously hanging out with people, but I'm so intrigued to see how I'm gonna sleep tonight. I still might be tired enough that I fall asleep straight away, but I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated tomorrow. That feels so good. Good morning, guys. I've decided I'm not going to go to the gym this morning. I'm going to go a bit later today because I just don't feel like it. And I have time to go later today. So I'm actually just going to read. Wow. Okay guys, it is Sunday, it's 5.30, I just got home from the gym. Honestly, that was not necessarily the best session I've had all week, but that was like the best gym experience I've had all week because I turned up and there was one car there and I went to the one that typically this week was super, super busy. Like when I went last Sunday, I went during the evening, but when I went last Sunday, it was packed. And then when I went last Monday morning at 4 a.m., that was the one where still half the car park was full. But today I went and there was one person and it was so fantastic. And other people did show up during the session, but like 
barely anyone. So if you are a gym anxiety girly like me, maybe try going to the gym at 4 a.m. on a Sunday because it is fantastic. <laughs> Today when I'm filming this, it is the following Monday. So I finished with this experiment and I just wanted to give you my final thoughts, my pros and cons, just a little summary of my findings from my little experiment, I guess. Firstly, I just wanted to acknowledge the privilege that I have and some of the factors that made it easier for me to do this. First of all, I don't have kids. I'm not a mom and I feel like being a mom would make this a totally different experience. So I just want to acknowledge that. Secondly, I would say I'm already a morning person. I really enjoy getting up early. Before this experiment, I was usually getting up around 5 a.m. anyway. So I was only really getting up one hour earlier than normal. So it wasn't a case of me normally waking up at eight and suddenly waking up at four. So if you're going to try an experiment like this, take into consideration what your current wake up time is. Thirdly, it is summer here in Australia. It is a lot easier for me personally, and I'm sure many of you guys would agree, to get up earlier in summer when the sun is already rising earlier compared to winter when it's hard to get out of a warm, snuggly bed. I don't know if I could do this in winter. I just wanted to mention that. And lastly, during this experiment, I was in a really great place in my menstrual cycle, and I feel like that actually has a lot more to do with everything than people really give it credit for. If I was on my period the week that I did this experiment, it might have looked totally different. So I don't know how that would have looked, but I just wanted to mention that as well. Next, I wanted to mention the things that I found super helpful during this experiment. A successful morning starts with a successful evening. And to me, that means getting to bed early. I know that sucks for some of you guys to hear, but you are not going to be able to wake up super early every single day consistently without getting adequate sleep. I feel like everyone has their own level of how much sleep they need. Some people need more than others. For me, seven hours seems to be perfect. So I found that no matter what time I'm waking up, as long as I get seven hours, I can do it. Another thing that I did every day during this challenge was the night before I would lay out the outfit that I was gonna wear, my shoes, my socks, my hairbrush, my deodorant, like anything that I needed the morning of was already laid out on the bench in the bathroom. So all I had to do was get up, walk to the bathroom and just like start getting changed, wash my face, all that sort of stuff. And it was all laid out for me. There were no decisions that needed to be made. Everything was all together, including my gym bag, my keys, my headphones, my water bottle was already full. I had set myself up completely the night before. I also charged my phone overnight in our ensuite. So that meant for me to get up and turn my alarm off at 4 a.m. I had to get out of bed, walk into our ensuite, turn off the alarm. And I think physically getting up and having to turn that alarm off rather than just like having it next to me on my bedside table made it so much easier for me to just stay up afterwards instead of just like snoozing my alarm and going back to sleep straight away. Another thing that I think is actually really important is having a plan for your morning. You don't want to get up and then kind of be like, oh, what am I doing now? Am I going to the gym? Am I staying home today? But when you don't have to make decisions and you know exactly Exactly what you're doing so for me most days it was just going to the gym I would just get up walk to the bathroom put on the clothes that were already out for me and head straight out the door I also think you just need to have a why if you don't have an actual reason behind what you're doing and if you don't actually think that waking up earlier is going to benefit you in some way there is no way you're gonna be able to get out of bed in the morning like if you don't have an actual reason as to why you think this habit will positively impact your life why on earth would you be doing it and why on earth would your brain allow you to continue doing it and your why doesn't have have to be some like deep rooted philosophical thing. It could be as simple as mine, which was, I know that if I get to the gym by 4.30, I'm probably gonna have access to all of the machines and all of the equipment that I wanna use without having to wait for it, without having to be in anyone's way. And for me, I have a lot of gym anxiety. So that was enough of a reason for me to get out of bed every single morning. And lastly, the biggest like physical things that I think can help you are nutritious meals and coffee slash caffeine in whatever kind of form, whether that's pre-workout, matcha, whatever's your personal preference. I don't wanna promote caffeine too, too much, but I do think it was a seriously helpful tool for me to use during this time and it's something that I'm going to be doing every day anyway but I just found it especially helpful but honestly nutritious meals were such a game changer for me I could definitely tell the days where I didn't have a nutritious meal compared to the days when I did the difference in my energy levels was so noticeable to me and I didn't think it would be such a drastic change. And finally, let's talk about my personal pros and cons. As for my pros, I love not feeling like I'm in a rush. I hate being late, I hate being in a rush. And at 4 a.m., it doesn't feel like you have to rush to be anywhere. Another pro for me was getting my workout done first thing in the morning. As I mentioned in this video, usually I work out around midday because I just find it kind of works with my schedule. So I've never really been a morning workout person, but I loved it because you kind of get your workout done before you even have time to convince yourself out of it. Again, like I feel like I've 
already mentioned, I am someone who really struggles with gym anxiety. And so getting a really empty gym is just a best case scenario for me. And if you're someone who struggles with gym anxiety, I could not recommend this enough. In saying that, it wasn't guaranteed. There were some days like you guys saw that I showed up to the gym and there were like 30 other people there. And sometimes I showed up and there was like one other person there. So it was hit and miss. It wasn't like a guaranteed thing, but there's just a bigger chance that I'm gonna have a quieter gym. And so overall it was a pro for me. I feel like not everyone will be able to relate to this one, but for me specifically, one of the pros that I had from completing this challenge was that I was actually sleepy when I went to bed. I have struggled with falling asleep for pretty much all of my adult life. I'm definitely a very high strung person and anxious person. I feel like my brain is just go, go, go. It doesn't ever feel like my brain shuts off. And so obviously waking up at 4 a.m., you get tired earlier in the evening. And so by the time I was ready to go to sleep, I was so tired that I fell asleep within like 15 minutes, I think every single night, which is just unheard of for me. So that was just incredible. And lastly, and I think one of like the biggest pros that I have from this challenge is self-discipline. And for some reason, discipline didn't even cross my mind when I was planning on doing this challenge. But I truly believe that when you keep the promises that you have made for yourself, you gain confidence. And so for me, going to sleep and telling myself that I was gonna get up at 4 a.m. and then actually getting up at 4 a.m. was such a confidence booster because it was kind of like, wait, I can actually do what I set my mind to. I can actually achieve my goals. I can actually do this thing that I thought was really hard. Like I am actually very capable. And starting your day with that kind of mindset is literally setting yourself up for success. I know that I'm just talking about getting up earlier. It doesn't have to be that deep, but I really do believe that setting myself up for success at the beginning of the day really set the tone for the rest of my day and I felt like I had productive days. I felt like I was in a good mood. It was just a game changer. So those are all my pros. In terms of cons, of course you're gonna be more tired. I definitely noticed that I was tired throughout the week. However, I feel like no matter what time I wake up, I'm gonna have days where I feel tired. And the tiredness that I felt this week doing this challenge wasn't drastically different from the tiredness that I feel otherwise. And the only other con that I have is that it is hard. Yes, it is hard to get up at 4 a.m., but I also think it was way easier than I thought. There were definitely days where it was harder than others, but overall it was easier than I thought. So do I think that getting up at 4 a.m. every day is a sustainable lifestyle? I think yes and no. I think currently for my lifestyle, it is, as long as I'm getting enough sleep. That's basically it. As long as I'm going to bed early enough, I think it is sustainable. And finally, as I'm sure some of you may be wondering, does this mean that I'm just gonna be waking up at 4 a.m. every day for the rest of my life? Also, yes and no. I think personally, I could do it like five days a week. I don't think I feel the need or the desire to do it seven days a week. Do I think I can do this throughout winter? I don't think so. Do I think that I'll be waking up at 4 a.m. in five to 10 years time when I might have a family? Probably not. So for now, I do think I will continue it again, like I said, probably like five days a week. I'm gonna attempt it and we're just gonna see how it goes long term. However, I feel like I'm always adapting and changing routines and habits that I have just to suit my lifestyle and depending on whatever goals that I have at the time. Overall, getting up at 4 a.m. was actually a lot easier and way more beneficial than I originally thought it was going to be. So I do definitely recommend trying it or trying some something similar, whether it's getting up one hour earlier than you normally do, or even just like 10 minutes and just seeing what sort of positive or negative effect it might have on your life, because you might find that it has a really positive impact on you. I definitely think it's at least worth a try, but I hope you guys liked this little spin on a normal weekly vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Good.